Hi, my name is Carol Lin. I'm an application engineer here at Maxim Integrated. Hi, my name is Bob G, business manager for serial transceivers here with Maxim Integrated. Today, we're going to demonstrate the Max 13054A shield board, which features the Max 13054A. It is a 5 volt, 2 megabit per second CAN transceiver. It has high fault protection of plus or minus 65 volts which comes in handy for applications where there's cabling, wiring out in the field, and you have a local technician that's working on it, and they could accidentally short a local power supply um, to your CAN-H or CAN-L data line, anywhere from minus 65 to plus 65 volts, and that CAN transceiver will be fully protected. It also has uh, plus or minus 25 volts of common mode range, so this comes in handy for applications where uh, the ground planes are shifting relative to two different systems. They could be due to uh, either operating from two different uh, transformers or there could be a large electrical noise source uh, that's in between them that's really, let's say, bouncing that, that ground plane around. Um, the MAX 13054A also has a standby pin, which is a multifunction pin, um, and we'll go into that demo a little bit later. Um, but the part also has very high ESD, plus or minus 25 kV uh, HBM, plus or minus 15 kV uh, air gap, and plus or minus 10 kV of uh, contact. It also has a VL pin, um, which makes it really easy to interface with uh, low uh, voltage uh, ASICs or controllers. Um, it goes down to 1.62 volts, so that means that um, you know if you have a a local micro that operates at 1.8 volts plus or minus 10 percent, it's not a problem. So we're going to highlight a few features on this shield board. We're going to look at uh, the CAN-H and CAN-L uh, data signals as well as the differential signal. And then we'll have a look at dominant timeout and then slow slew rig. So Carol, can you describe the, the board here? Sure. Um, here we have our MAX 13054, a shield board. It, it, it can interface with Arduino and embed boards alike, but for today's purposes, we'll be using a power supply, a function generator, and we'll view the, the signals on this oscilloscope. First off, I'm going to go through all the jumper settings, and you can reference the, the jumpers on your um, screen as well. We have, uh, first off, the TVS diodes that are rated at 30 volts, our load, uh, which we've set to 60 ohm. It has another option to set, set it to uh, 120 ohm split V termination, as well as removing the jumpers. Um, you will have no load, so you can have more than uh, two nodes in your network. And uh, next off, we have our supply, VDD and our VL supply. They're both connected to the external supply that is also connected to the VDD external test point here and VL uh, extern test point here. Our JU3 uh, is mainly for measuring the logic current draw, um, so we'll keep it on. Um, here we have our RXD uh, to a 15 puff capacitor to ground, and then um, JU9 is only uh, used when you're interfacing with the Arduino or embed board. And lastly, we have our JU12 that uh, is our standby pin. It selects between ground, the 26.1 kilo ohm resistor to go into slow slew rate mode, and um, to go into our digital isolator uh, when you're using the, the Arduino or embed board to control it. Um, for Time-saving purposes, we already have one setup. That's great. Thank you, Carol, for showing kind of like the layout of the boards. So what we're going to show now is um, how the CAN-H and CAN-L um, output signals meet the ISO 11898-2 uh, standards. Um, so Carol, what do we have here? Um, we have our power supply, uh, five volt power supply connected to VDD extern, um, IL ref, which is the power supply for the digital isolator, and then our VL extern. Also, we have a function generator uh, set up at 500 kilohertz from zero to five volts. Uh, it's a, outputting a, sine wa a square wave. 
and it's being applied to the TXD. We have four scope probes, one on TXD here, <clears throat> and then another on RXD, and CAN-L and CAN-H here. And we can take a look at the signals right now. So I guess if I lower it to 4.5 volts, really sense it. Okay, we got it. Almost there. Um, here we have our TXD signal, our RXD signal, and then on, on the bottom we have our CAN H and CAN L. Our math channel shows the difference between our CAN H and our CAN L. So what we should see is that in the dominant state, it should be between zero, uh, between 1.5 to 3 volts to meet the ISO standard. And then in the recessive state, it should be roughly around 0 volts. Um, maybe we should adjust the scale a little so you guys can see a little better. So at 4.5 volts, we can see that the difference voltage here is um, roughly around 2 volts and well within our, our ISO standard. As we increase the supply to 5 volts, which is our typical operating supply voltage. Then I'll go to 5.5. There we go. At 5.5, um, our difference voltage is roughly 2.7 volts. Um, we still have 300 millivolts uh, between a buffer. So um, that's all it is. It's a, it, this is how you can tell that your can is up and running and everything looks kosher. And so now we'll um, demonstrate dominant timeout. And what dominant timeout is basically when you have a faulty controller or you have something going on with the TXD line where you have that tied to zero volts or close to ground, and um, which means your driver will be in the dominant state for an extended period of time. What dominant timeout does is that after a given amount of time, it's, like on a, it's going to automatically uh, pull it down to the recessive state and that enables other nodes to communicate on, on the network. Right, so I have uh, set up the function generator at 100 hertz because our dominant timeout um, typically is around 2.5 milliseconds. And as you can see, our TXD channel has a 50% duty cycle. Um, but our RXD only has, uh, is only low for, let's see, roughly 2.5. Two, two to three, point, three millisecond here. And you can see the dominant timeout um, taken into effect uh, after the, the three milliseconds. And it will release the dominant timeout once TXD toggles low again. That's toggles correct. from high to mm -hmm. low. That's great. So um, the next demo will be showing uh, slow slew rate. So slow slew rate comes in handy if um, there are applications that are um, operating in lower data rate, um, but it's sensitive to EMI or um, reflections on the line. And so Carol will show us how easily that can be done with our shield board. So we're going to go back to the 500 kilohertz setting. And as you can see, the edges here um, they're quite sharp. The rise and fall times are, are pretty sharp. And once I switch um, the standby pin over to the 26.1 kilo ohm setting, there's been a dramatic increase in the rise time and the fall time to lower that EMI generated by the CAN transceiver. That's great. So with the MAX 13054A shield board, you can see that we've just quickly shown uh, three different features, but you could also do a lot more with um, this shield board, uh, such as fault protection, you know, plus or minus 65 volts. You can also um, test for common mode range of the plus or minus 25 volts, as well as ESD, and you can, you know, play around with the standby pin to see how that operates. So um, Maxim's been uh, a leader in the serial uh, tran uh, transceiver space for a very long time. We're known for uh, robust and reliable features. Um, 
The MAX 13054A carries that tradition, and this shield board makes it very easy for designers like you to, um, to evaluate the part.